Today I'm going to review a Christmas Carol from 1951, also known as Scrooge. A Christmas Carol came out in 1951 and it's also known as Scrooge in the UK. It was produced and directed by Brian Desmond Hurst and it's based on A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens from 1843. It runs 87 minutes and is an English film. And this was popular in Britain, but it was a bit of a flop in the US. There's many versions of A Christmas Carol, but this is the most iconic. The film stars Alistair Sim, Mervyn Johns, Harmony Baddeley, Jack Warner, Kathleen Harrison, Michael Horden and George Cole. And the film's also got some narration from Peter Bull. And this is one of the most popular Christmas films. So everyone knows the plot of this film about three ghosts visiting Scrooge on a night. The ghost of Christmas past, the ghost of Christmas present and the ghost of Christmas yet to come. And there's also a ghost of his friend right at the beginning telling him that these ghosts are going to repair. And at the end of seeing the ghosts, his character changes. So there's many versions of this tale um, and there's also kind of films that are similar. Like I reviewed a couple of films on this channel recently, Cash on Demand, that's got similar themes to this story. And also It's a Wonderful Life, that, that's got um, a Christmas Carol connection to it. But this is the, the most iconic version of the film and it's probably the most popular Christmas film. So the film is split into different sections. At the beginning you see Scrooge in his office being a right miserable miser. He's being awful to Bob Cratchit, telling him um, Bob Cratchit's basically begging so he can have Christmas Day off. It is only once a year, sir. It's a poor excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. Yes, sir. I'm sure I'm very sorry, sir, to cause you such an inconvenience. Is that much of a tight ass bastard? Hey, Phil, if I was that Bob Cratchit, I'd stick that bloody candle up that greedy bugger's ass. <laughs> But when he uh, gets back to his house, he sees his friend, the ghost of his friend, Jacob Marley. And it's quite scary, that, played by Michael Horden. The very first ghost that you, you see, he's got chains on and he's got this high-pitched screaming. So uh, I thought that was really well done. And it's quite a moody film, this, actually, with the black and white photography. That's always great when you do ghost stories having black and white films. So it's quite a scary version actually at times. Hey, is this a bloody Christmas film or a bloody horror film? When I saw that last bloody ghost I bloody shit blow lights. Yeah it is like a bit of a horror film. There's a good cast as well. Um, you even see Happy Jakes. Hey Phil, that's that fat bird in them Carry On films. Yes Bourne, she was in 15 Carry On films. So it's got a good cast, it's it's well shot. So the very first ghost, the ghost of Christmas past, it's a old man with long white hair and he's showing Scrooge his past, telling him that his father didn't like him and showing his relationship with this girl that he, he should have married, but he didn't. You felt sorry for the character of Scrooge straight away. How could you have brought me here? Have you no mercy, no pity? <laughs> Ebenezer. Forgive me, Fan. Forgive me, Fan. And it's one of the better parts of the film, actually, if I know his uh, past history. Then you get the second ghost, the ghost of Christmas present. He's kind of like a Santa image. Big guy, big jolly guy. And he's showing them uh, like everyone go to parties. And the last ghost, the ghost of Christmas yet to come. Uh, right from the very beginning, you just see a hand uh, out of the, the frame of the camera. Just just the that part of the hand. That's quite scary. Uh, this ghost doesn't talk. Like the angel of death sort of thing. Like a black cloak around him. And he's showing uh, what's going to happen in... To, in the future, it shows, um, there's a good scene where it shows Scrooge's grave. That's quite well done. And it's also shown people getting his belongings from his house. People calling, not really a good word for him. But there's a, a really sad moment during this section of the film. 
going on about, going on about Tiny Tim, about this little boy, and he's he's not going to live very long. There's a there's a part of the the film where it shows that he's died where he used to sit near the fire. It's empty. You just say his crutch next to the fire. Really sad uh, part of the film that, but it's very effective. So I thought that was excellent that part. Oh Tim, my tiny Tim. Then after he's seen all the ghosts, he, he has a change of heart and he's all jolly and dancing. Really funny moment that, where his housemaid's uh, shocked by how he's like all jolly and everything as so he's cracked up. He gives her money and she's wondering why he's giving her money. Gives her a pair eyes, he takes a turkey to Tiny Tim's house. It's a, it's a nice ending to the film. So it's a very moralistic story. It's kind of saying that money is not as important as having like a good family and real good friends, not fake friends. So if you if you got real good friends and a, and a family and everything, it's much more valuable in life than just being a greedy bastard. <laughs> so overall, I thought this film was really good. I expected it to be another overrated Christmas film, but it wasn't. And although there's been a lot of great versions of this story, this is still high up there. It's probably one of the best. So out of ten, I'm going to give this one nine. Nine out of ten. I do think Roman's a bit like it. But don't feel. You always got to be a greedy bastard over Christmas. Okay, everybody, bye. See you next time. Like, subscribe and share. And a happy Christmas. Bye. -bye. But now I know that I don't know all of the Christmas morning. I must stand in my head. I must stand in my head.